What's going on? This is Michael Sean from Unison Games coming at you with a new special episode of Trainer on the Road. Last time we talked, um, I was talking about the coronavirus and how it's going to be like blowing up uh, the competitive scene of uh, the Pokemon TCG just because um, not being able to play at events is going to make it more difficult to go to Worlds, however way they sliced it. We just received an announcement, either yesterday or the day before, um, being the end of March, uh, from the Pokemon people, and they said that all um, 2020 season of Pokemon has been canceled um, up to Worlds, so that's pretty wild um, that they just went ahead and canceled. I think that was probably the best thing they could have done, um, just because none of us know how long this crisis is going to last. So I definitely uh, understand why they did that. I think they made a, a, a good call. But um, there are some other things in this announcement that I think we need to talk about. So um, what's going to happen is all of the points that you earned in the 2019 to 2020 season are going to roll over into the 2020 to 2021 season for Pokemon. Um, any world's invite that you've already earned is going to be valid for the 2021 Pokemon World Championships. So that's really interesting um, for several reasons. So the first reason that it's really interesting for is that people that already have their invite don't have to play any more Pokemon. And that's a little strange because there's like a, a, a large group of really solid players that already had their invite for uh, London this year and now they have no pressure to go and compete anywhere else and here's the here's the bigger deal with that let's say I have my invite and the way that I got it is I day two a regional tournament and then I got eight best finishes first place finishes for challenges and eight first place finishes for cups now that would be pretty impressive that'd be cool but here's the thing you're not allowed to get more than eight best finishes for challenges and cups which means that if you've already in the 20 or the 2019 to 2020 season gotten all eight of your best finishes for challenges and cups there's no way that you're going to be able to get more so i think one of the things that this is going to do is it's actually going to keep some of those like circuit players you know the players that are traveling trying to get points i don't think they're going to be playing at challenges and then i think maybe they'll show up for cups just because sometimes cups have better prize support but like i don't see why you would travel for a challenge at this point um maybe if you just really like have a hankering to play pokemon but uh the other thing that it does is is well let's finish that first so Basically what that means, I think, is that challenges and cups, like the local competitive stuff, is going to get less competitive. Which is really interesting because we just talked about in our last video how if um, they're just canceling all events and still having worlds or or, or uh, making stuff worth more, that we're going to actually be seeing a very competitive scene. I actually think now we have the opposite effect where we're probably not going to see as many uh, highly competitive players show up to these local events. That's really interesting because that also means that we're going to have a lot of more mediocre players getting top finishes at Cups and Challenges, which probably means that we're going to have more mediocre players at Worlds um, or just at even higher level events. So now let's take this to the regional level, right? If, you've, if you're good and you've won a couple regionals already, like you're probably or were topped at a couple regionals, you're probably set with your invite. So I think what's going to happen is a lot of us that want to be competitive players but don't want to be professional players um, are most likely not going to travel to a lot of regionals, which is going to take I, what I would call the Tier 2 competitive players out of the equation for a lot of regionals. But 
I think still, like, people that are professional players, they're still going to want to go to regionals, obviously, because that's how they make money, and um, they get stipends to travel and, like, all that kind of stuff. So I think regionals, probably what we're going to see is we're going to see one, like, very clear, like, top tier of highly competitive players, and then we're going to see, like, a lot of low-tier players and local players show up to those regionals as well. With that said, because mediocre players will will be finishing better at challenges and cups, they may have more, um, like a bigger desire to go check out these regionals and try to get their qualification for Worlds because um, you can't do it with just challenges and cups. So we could actually see more like mediocre players show up that may not have showed up before because now they actually have a chance of getting a thing to Worlds because they have, you know, X amount of points that they brought over into the new season. So I think that's really interesting. I actually think that, especially on the local level, we're probably going to be seeing a much less competitive metagame right now just because there's less there's less uh, pressure to get to Worlds. Um, the other thing I think we're going to be seeing is uh, ranked is going to be really odd because all the players that have, like the professional players and stuff, um, that carried all these points into it, it would almost the, the players that are top ranked this year are like guaranteed to be top ranked next year, which is gonna mess up the whole stipend system. Um, basically, like if you were planning on trying to get better, like starting now, trying to get better and start to become a little bit more professional, in the next season, good luck. Because all the people that are, um, ha- are carrying over, you know, six, 700 points from this season into the next season, they're gonna be the ones that um, are already like predisposed to be on the top. So, so that's kind of interesting um, for players that may be trying to become more professional, trying to get stipends, uh, things like that. Um, but, that's not really where I'm at personally, but that may be where, where you are and where you want to get. So just keep that in mind as you're trying to become more professional. The, the, uh, the a second thing that's kind of like hard, hard, uh, re- like re- very affected by this is um, the season itself. And so we basically, Pokemon does their seasons based on uh, the sets that come out. So right now, currently, we're in the Sword and Shield season because Sword and Shield is the newest expansion of the Pokemon trading card game that's come out. Uh, Starting midway or the end of April, as soon as, yeah, the end of April, whenever the next set becomes legal for tournament play, actually, I think it's just April in general. I think they just do it by month. So April uh, on, you know, the the third, I believe, Friday of April, the third or the fourth Friday of April, Pokemon Rebel Clash will become legal for tournament play. So April is considered the start of the Rebel Clash season. So um, for the Rebel Clash season, I'm really curious as to what people are going to be doing for that because you're never going to have a competitive event in the Rebel Clash season. By the time Pokemon uh, is back up and running, they've canceled everything until at least Worlds. So we're talking mid-August. Everything until mid-August is done. And so unless they delay the release of their set post-Rebel Clash, Rebel Clash will exist, the season of Rebel Clash will exist entirely in an environment where there's no competitive play. Um, And so that's kind of interesting to me. Now, it's a little worrying to me because I own a, a, a card store and that basically it means that I, I think people will have less interest, at least competitive players, will have less interest in Rebel Clash, which is a little like nerve, like I'm nervous about it. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, with that said, Rebel Clash looks like it's going to be a really cool set. Uh, me and a friend of mine from Team Metroflex, hashtag Team Metroflex, was um, discussing the the idea that Sword and Shield actually did not have like this crazy impact on the meta like we thought it did, uh, like wait like we thought it was going to do. I think like we thought that maybe Quick Ball might open up 
the possibility for other decks to be used and it really did it really what happened was quick ball just slotted into decks that were already being used and then with the one exception being obviously zacian decks mostly zacian adp obviously yeah that did impact the meta but as far as zacian adp itself look at the the cards that are played in it a lot of them we've are not just sword and shield like usually when we get a new expansion like think about unified minds for instance when unified minds came out um Mew Mew took over the format, and the thing with Mew Mew is like a solid half of the cards that were being played in Unified Minds uh, were in Unified Minds. Like a half of the solid cards that were played in that de that deck, the deck that kind of got big from the set, were actually from that set. And when it, when you look at Zacian ADP, that's definitely not the case. You basically have your Zacians, you have um, Metal Saucer. Uh, you have professors research, professors research, maybe Vitality Band, and then if you're playing Galarian Berserker, maybe that. But that's it. If you look at the trainer lineup and stuff, it's, it's all kind of the same standard stuff that's been already in play. And so, um, Rebel Clash looks like maybe it might make a bigger impact on the meta. I, I know that there's several decks coming out that, that are kind of hyped, um, with like Boltund and with, um, uh, uh, um, Rillaboom VMAX, um, some some of that stuff there. So uh, hopefully we'll be bringing you some kind of some kind of info on Rebel Clash soon in the future. So I'm hoping that that's enough to make it a little bit more successful. But right now I think it's actually looking pretty bleak, just because there's not going to be competitive play. By the time people are ready to use those cards, there'll be a whole nother set coming out that's legal for competitive play, and so. Um, I do think that that's really, really interesting, and that that's definitely another thing that's going to be impacted by this thing that Pokemon's coming out with. So, I guess with all that said, um, I I think Pokemon made a good decision. In, I mean, you can't like nobody was going to show up anyway, um, and and then anybody that shows up, you as, uh, just assume the risk of having um, them be contagious in some way and so so I, I don't think there was any other decision to make um i'm definitely disappointed you know the whole point of this video series was that i was trying to go to worlds and that'll still happen and these videos are still valid because all the points that i uh did or did not earn during the these uh during the course of this project um are going to be legal for next next season as well but i do think that um, I, I personally am just like a little disappointed that I'm not going to be able to get to play Pokemon. I've been playing online, but it's just not the same, really. Uh, that's actually another thing that maybe we should just like very quickly mention. I think one thing that's interesting about this is, is uh, PTCGO is going to be getting a lot more gameplay because those of us that like can't uh, just not play Pokemon at all are going to go and start playing online, which we have been, and I'm running currently running... Unison Games is currently running a league, um, online, and I'm also part of another uh, group that's running individual tournaments on uh, PTCGO, which has really, really been uh, kind of cool. Not as cool as playing in paper, though. It's just, it's just different, you know. And so, um, so I definitely invite you guys to check that out on um, Discord, Facebook. That is where we are primarily is Discord and Facebook. So just check out Unison Games on both of those things. Uh, I'm also working on a website that I'll link in the description. Uh, when it's ready. So um, definitely uh, let me know your thoughts on this cancellation. Like how how are you feeling about the fact that there's no worlds this year? Um, what kind of stuff are you thinking? Like are, are, was that a good idea? Was that a bad idea? If you say it was a bad idea, tell me why you say it's a bad idea. If you say it's a good idea, tell me why you think that too. Because um, I do think that that could be some really good discussion. Also, hit me up with uh, what you're the most hyped about for Rebel Clash. Give me like a like a top five or something. Um, that'll be really cool. But anyway, um, hang in there, Pokemon players. I know we can't play in person, but uh, don't let the uh, the the hype die for some of the cool stuff that the Pokemon trading card game has to offer. Play online, uh, do all that cool stuff. Hit me up, ask me some questions. Um, I would love to get some product in your hands if that's possible since we're closed and you might not be able to get product from the places you were getting it hit me up um, check out my eBay store all that good stuff but anyway be sure to like 
this video, subscribe to this channel, and uh, definitely check out some of the other videos. And I will see you guys later. Keep doing your Pokemon thing.